Hey everybody, it's Mike here at uh, Game From Scratch. Today we're looking at a very early in a development cycle tool, and that's Imogen. It's a GPU texture generator, and it just hit release 0.1. So this is very early on. This may just be a fun toy to play with, but hey, it's a fun toy, and I've been having fun playing with it. So I figured I'd share it here, and it's open source, MIT licensed. So this might turn into something. Now, as I mentioned, it is open source. It is up on GitHub. I'll toss this link down below, obviously. Uh, there are binaries available for download. So if you just want to pull down the binaries and take a look at it, you don't have to build it from source. Um, it is built from source. It's C++ code, um, uses the CMake libraries. Unfortunately, right now it is Windows only. But if you go down to the to-do list, da, 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 you will see that a port to Linux SDL and a port to Vulkan are somewhere in the future. So uh, hopefully other platforms get... Uh, uh, support or love in the future, but here you can see a screenshot of it in action. Very simple at this point in time. Basically, you're creating a node graph that spits out in the end this shader or this image or texture, and that's really what it's all about. So let's take a look deep inside. Now, if you're interested in it from a code point of view, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, the license is MIT source code license. If you don't know what your source code license is, MIT is one of the best ones. It allows you to do pretty much what you want. You just don't get a warranty and you can't sue or otherwise claim liability against the developer. So you can use it commercially, you can repurpose this into whatever kind of tool you want. I love the MIT license, it gives you an infinite amount of freedom for the most part. Um, you come in here, the source code, you will see that it is uh, like 10 files. So it's a very straightforward project to get started with. And it's built on the IM GUI or IM GUI, not sure how you'd pronounce that one, um, UI library. So let's take a look at it now. This is what you get if you download the zip file. The zip file is about four or five megs in size. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And we're just going to go ahead and open up Imogen, the executable. Now you'll notice in here, there's a bunch of GLSL shaders or OpenGL shader language shaders. And we're going to get back to those in a second. This might be where a lot of you want to actually play with uh, Imogen. Even if you don't want to generate um, textures procedurally, there might be some use for it just in learning shader programming. So let's go ahead and run it. All right, here we see the interface. Um, a little confusing to start with or a little empty to start with, but you see right here, here is your library of materials. So you can pick a material and you can hear these are three that they've pre-generated for you. So you can see they're using two circles, a blend between the circles, and then a blend between a checker pattern and a circle, a transformation to end up with this result. I'll highlight it over here and you can see the result right here. Also the parameters for that blend node we're in are displayed right here. So you can configure how the blend is going to work here. So I can switch that to a multiply, which is going to break it. I think all these are going to break it, to be honest, other than add. But you can change out the settings on each individual nodes in the graph that goes ahead and creates this end result. Here we can see a different one. This is a Japanese hex tile. So here are the various different uh, pieces that went together to make it. And then you get to the very end. So here is the end result of your procedurally generated image. And here it is tiled. So you have a bunch of them. And again, every node along the tree. So let's go back here. Here is a ramp node. You can control it. For example, here there's a graph for controlling how the ramp will work. We got user interface to tweak how we want it to be generated. Pretty cool stuff going on. And then finally, here is a PBR test. Now, one of the things that kind of is disappointing right now, this will make the tool a whole lot more useful in the future. Um, you'll see your PBR or physically based rendering node support is here. Unfortunately, the image is const defined. So you can bring in a diffuse channel, you can bring in a displacement, a rough and a normal map channel, but there is no raw support for texture files yet. So you can't import in your own textures. Once that gets brought in, uh, this goes from being a toy to an actual tool. So I hope that functionality is added soon. Just head on back over to the uh, to-do list and see where that is on the list. Uh, I'm currently implemented. Coming soon. Texture baking. Uh, pictures. I don't know where that would be coming in. And it might actually be possible to bring in external textures, but for the life of me, I can't figure out how to go ahead and do it. But we can bake the texture to a PNG, so that means your end result out. So that is kind of the gist of what you do here. If you want to go ahead and create your own node network, you just basically come up here and say new material. You'll see it new right here. I can call it, say, my material. Oh, it based off whatever was currently selected. All right, so we can come in here. We can start deleting out nodes that aren't relevant to us. Uh, get rid of you. Get rid of you. All right, so we have two blended circles going on right here. Uh, now we could go ahead and we can right click and add a new um, node in here. So let's add a sign node in. 
like that. So it's not really doing a whole lot. So let's get rid of that one circle. So we'll delete you. Right click, oops, select, click, delete. So I got our sign node. We'll pick the input on our sign node. So let's say four. All right, that'll work. Uh, and let's just bring that into our blend there. And then you will see the ultimate end result that it creates. And this is a blend, so we could bring in another node. So let's bring in a color node. And we'll pick greenish. And we'll bring that into the opposite node of blend, like that. Grab our blend. A and B. Red, green, blue, alpha, I'm assuming. So green, let's bring in a lot of the green from this guy right here. There you go. So we just blended in the two nodes and there is our end result. Now this time, again, 100% toy, not a whole lot of real life applicable uses for it other than it is a small self-contained open source C++ uh, project that you can um, learn from, of course. And it performs well, it's got a nice UI, definitely customizable. So I could grab the logs, for example, and I could redock them over here. And we can get rid of things, we can change things up. Uh, each of these uh, border areas is resizable. So there's a solid UI going on already for a point one release. But what I'm really kind of impressed with here is let's look at this list here. So we've got materials, blends, filter, noise, um, transforms here, generator, circle, square, checker, sign, hexagon, and all that kind of stuff, circle splatter. So if I switch over here to shaders, this is where those GLSL shaders come from. So circle splatter, it's just a GLSL shader and you have the shader code right here to check out. Over here, we've got ramp, our sine wave square, tiling, um, the PBR channel. So all of those nodes that we're creating, we're just actually creating shaders in a shader graph. And the shaders are just straight up GLSL shaders. And we saw them earlier on right here in this folder. So if we want to add our own, let's just go ahead and we'll duplicate blend. And we'll call this my shader. Now I don't know if that requires a reload, probably requires a reload. So let's go out of here, back in. Yeah, so let's close that guy down, go back up a folder, and relaunch. And go into shaders, and now you will see my shader is in there. So if you want to create your own custom shader nodes in here, or you want to use a tool for learning GL, uh, GLSL shader programming, this could be a useful tool for you. And it also, again, it's fun. It, it's, it's kind of an easy, clean, fun way of creating node graphs of... Uh, stuff to just ultimately generate these image outputs, uh, which then of course you can bake out. How do I actually bake? Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. Is it right click here? Oh yeah, bake. And I'm gonna spit that out to somewhere, unless that's gonna crash. I don't know where that spit that out, but spit it somewhere. And that is how you can export your end image result. But again, quick, simple tool. It's it's actually kind of fun to play with for a little bit. And again, the fact that every node in there is just a straight up GLSL shader, you can drop in your node. Um, so you can create and make this thing more complicated as you go. Or the cool thing is if a bit of a community forms behind it, and people start contributing their own GLSL, sh uh, GLSL shaders, this could turn into something pretty powerful pretty quick. Now I do want to see uh, texture inputting. Uh, especially for those PBR nodes, because that would make it a whole lot more useful over time. But again, this is a 0.1 release. This is the beginning of something potentially. So that is um, Imogen from Cedric Guillemont. Uh, Guillemet, sorry, no N. Um, and yeah, it's MIT open source license. If you're interested, give it a check out. All right, that's it for now. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.